Solaris had an update, and now the entire menu is weird. But that also means we need to mess around with some of the new stuff, like the new Fruitful Partnership Origin. Because it adds this new Starseed Garden, which really only has one purpose, and that is to attract these guys, the, the janky. This in combination with Cordyceptic Drones means that we can get an overwhelming empire within about 20 to 30 years. Let's go, shall we? So we have a bit of a weird game on our hands. As I mentioned before, we have no hands. How did we discover fire is our empire of choice. And because we have this weird new module on the on my starbase, the seed starseed garden, which basically lures space fauna to graze at the starbase and then collect seed pods, which can then be deployed all over the galaxy. And that last part is not really all that interesting to us, even though it adds some interesting mechanics. That luring part is where the real fun begins, especially considering if we have Cordyceptic drones, we can basically eat whatever we, um, we desire, because they'll just come to us. And that's really all we need, really. In the meantime, though, let's start colonizing and uh, start surveying stuff. As you can see, the first one, uh, first fleet has already arrived. We can't really do anything with this, but they will be starting to pick up the seed pods and if they fall on a colonizable world, we'll be able to do something with it. Apparently, we'll be able to direct an energy beam at it for like 3,000 energy by, and uh, that'll be it. But before we get there, we're going to need to build an army. An army worthy of Mordor. Hive minds, especially the cordyceptic flavor, need to communicate efficiently at all time. But it's kind of mind-boggling how they can speak with one voice. Thankfully, today's partner Brilliant has a great course on neural networks, which may help us understand the ins and outs of that. Creating an unstoppable force of undead space whales is not an easy task. There's math, there's physics, and a whole bunch of other stuff, and thankfully, Brilliant has gamified the learning aspect of that and presents it in a fun and easy-to-understand format. From the basics to the advanced, learning with Brilliant is a joy. As I mentioned, Brilliant has a course on creating neural networks which covers such things as neuron training, activation arithmetic, as well as curve fitting. Don't know what any of those words mean? Neither did I until I got brilliant. Of course, you may want to do something less out there and say learn about structures and support. It's great material if you would like to build some sort of structure, say like a shed. So why not try it out? It may help you out in your day-to-day -day work or it will just allow you to keep your mind sharp. Get started for free for 30 days and get a 20% off a annual plan by visiting brilliant.org slash aspec. And it would appear that uh, the so Jank, you've brought the seed pots to the system next door, and we could hypothetically just spend 3,000 energy to open them and we would get a colony. But it's basically next door, so why would we spend 3,000 energy on a colony ship at this moment in time? It doesn't really seem all that practical, especially considering a colony ship is just a cheaper option when at this range. But at least we get a couple of cool icons, I guess, and the Tsujanki will move on. In the meantime, though, we are going to start ramping up our fleet power. That is our main priority right now. We need to get as many ships out on the field as possible because we need to hit at least about seven to 800 fleet power because we're gonna go to janky hunting we're also going to completely ignore the new mnt traditions and just go for good old supremacy because we need more firepower don't you just love it when you go gaia cedars and then you get the Grenor as your precursors yeah that's just wonderful 1000 fleet power of Tajanki just entered the system but sadly we're not quite ready for them just yet We'll need to go for the next round, but then, and then we start steamrolling. Alrighty, 14 years in, we've got some prey. Let's see what we can do here. We got the fleet ready. Let's see. Uh, come. They got away. But not forever. We're gonna, we're gonna hunt them down. And for some reason, we decided to fight two swarms at once, which is fine because it means that we can grow our stuff rather quickly there we go stuff is being added quite nicely apparently uh, we killed a bunch of them and we got a lot of energy for this what's the tally here okay i lost one space amoeba but i got a ton of new creatures for this yes they all have been reanimated and now 15 years in the game 
I got 5.1 thousand fleet power. And what will we do with this? Well, obviously, we will immediately start a first contact war to gain control of the system next door. And because, you know, it's got two continental worlds in it. Who c I cannot ignore that. Like, it has to be mine. And then the fleet can just, you know, move in other positions to continue this uh, first contact war to see how it all goes. You have got to be shitting me. That right there is the mother load. We are 17 years into the game, and we are about to get even bigger. In the meantime, though, I don't think I've ever actively opened up a first uh, contact war, and received. we're yes, winning, the and they are dying very quickly. And on top of that, we got the Rubricator. We should be uh, spiraling out of control real quick. Sadly, we made first contact, which for some reason means this first contact war is done. Anyway, uh, we still got 5.3 thousand fleet power, and we're about to grow that a little bit, because um, we're just going to go ahead and uh, consume these guys while we are at it, shall we? Time for the um nom nom nom. And for every single one that dies, we will instantly just add them to our fleet. And uh, as you can see, our fleet will actively grow with every single dead Kajanki. And we're desecrating their grave while we're at it because, well, we're core septic drone. And as you can see, we now have 11,000 fleet power, 12,000, 13,000, 14,000, um, 15? Yeah, yeah, we, we are going to be unstoppable. We are going to be completely unstoppable with an insane amount of fleet power. And because of that, we're just gonna go ahead and vassalize these guys next door to us because they really don't stand a chance. Well, at the same time, we've got uh, this little fleet over here, which we're just gonna keep in our capital system because Tajanki will still flock to our worlds, which is great because it means this second fleet can also grow absolutely gigantic. And before you know it, well, let's put it this way, the shard is gonna pop out of this relic world. I think we can all see where this is going. And just like that, we've managed to win the war. But obviously, we need to find ourselves some more targets. Are these some aliens we need to target? No. Well, maybe. I do like myself some free resources being cranked out by drones. Anyway, with all that stuff in mind, we made the first contact with a federation for some reason and obviously there's only really one way that we can end this and that's by declaring war and uh, that's exactly what we're doing because this federation over here cannot stand we just cannot have this stuff in our backyard guys it's just not happening you're going to be a tributary just like everybody else in the galaxy is going to be and it's going to be a fun time for everybody well good news we are completely crushing Whatever these guys are throwing at us, and it's just not much. Uh, my pops are moving all about, that's all perfectly fine. But, uh, yeah, these guys are going to uh, be integrated into my empire. <gasps> Wait, hold on. Did somebody pick up some seeds? And my, and my fleet didn't do anything? Well, that's just not very cash money. Where are they? Are they over here? Yes, okay, they got 700 fleet power. Okay, the chase is on. We're going to need to expand our, our fleet a little bit. And we don't do it by building. Did we have no hands, and how did we discover fire? Of course. Run supreme. We managed to uh, break up an entire federation. And, uh, yeah. Good times for us, because it means that we are growing. Does this, however, mean that we can go straight into the next one, if we would want to? No, not yet. We need to, we need to wait ten years, but we, we can be patient. Besides, there is the Marxist Interplanetary Alliance right next door which we should probably also gobble up. So we'll just do that instead. We Whilst we're at it, we just system. just added those tributes to our empire. Uh, because we cannot uh, attack this alliance yet, we're just going to go and purify these here uh, purifiers. Uh, we'll just get rid of them quickly because, you know, we can take all this territory, yada, yada, yada. And, uh, yeah, basically we'll have half the galaxy under our control oh, real dang quickly. Six years! That's long how long my fleet needed to annihilate the keepers of the grid. 
Yeah, the entire western side of the galaxy is now dead. The real question is, however, can I now the Yes, yes I can declare war on these guys. The conquest never ends. The conquest will never end. I am going to take the entire galaxy before the, before the turn of the century. And that just leaves one of that federation. The rest of the galaxy has been relatively quiet. Probably something to do with the fact that uh, marauders are effectively blocking the way. But it doesn't matter. Whomever is behind here, they ain't gonna live very long. In the meantime, I've been working on a little project. And that little project is going on over here. Notice that this station's got a couple of thousand military power on it because it's just churning out quite a lot of defense platforms. Defense platforms that are going to be shooting down whatever dragon comes off of this rock. And then they'll bring that to life back to life as well. It'll be the flagship of our Tajanki fleet. A weird ass empire called the Chosen have spawned on the fringe of the galaxy here. They only got two worlds, so. I guess it shouldn't be too difficult to take them down. I should probably set up a spy war network with them, though. Just in case. In the meantime, the trap is set. And we are about to get put in a cheese the size of a dragon in there. It looks like we found our last two empires. One of them, which is a fanatic purifier that takes up about a quarter of the galaxy. The other is a fanatic purifier that takes up about ten systems or so. Oh yeah, and of course we got the remnants of this federation. But aside from that, that's basically it. The trap's been set. She is about to pop. We got about 60,000 fleet power, 70,000 fleet power ready to go. Let's sort of see whether or not we can get the Empress's Lilac Ribbon. There is the Talons of the Void. Let's, uh, let's consume her, shall we? We got a lot of firepower in here. Uh, a lot of which we are probably going to lose quite rapidly, but I'm not too concerned about it because this drake should be eaten alive by basically everything that I have here. Like, it already has no armor anymore. It is in hull. Three, two, one. I have one. <laughs> Send in uh, the necro drones, shall we? Let's send in the necro drones. This is just... I love I love this so much. It's just hilarious to me. And there is the shard. Not only can it uh, jump drive wherever, uh, it also has about a hundred thousand fleet power. And I will immediately use that to uh, annihilate the fallen that are sitting down here because I don't really care too much about them. So uh, we're just going to go in and uh, just knock on the border and say hello to them. Whilst on the other side, uh, Linnea has decided to drop into uh, my vassal, which is obviously an issue. But uh, it just gives us the opportunity to win the game at this stage. I just love this. Apparently the Chosen don't have a, a, a main entry point, but... Dragon don't care about that sort of thing. We're just going to jump right in on top of them. Uh, sure, do they have a large amount of firepower? I'm sure they do. Uh, are we going to throw a significantly larger amount of firepower at them? Oh, uh, my dragon just died. Excuse me? Okay, that's that's not good. Well, now we got a better idea what their territory looks like. They do have one small problem, though. Their capital is right on the inbound, and as soon as I take in that, uh, this war is going to be over pretty quick, and uh, the splash zone is going to be ended. But they do have a reasonable amount of space here that we are still are going to need to scoop up. Thankfully, my allies are still here, and... Uh, they're, they're, they're doing a good enough job for now. We we'll continue bombing as much as we can. And for some reason, I pulled in mirror, mirror. Uh, sadly, I had to give up uh, the war, which is unfortunate uh, because you know apparently one of my allies who started the stupid thing had some issues with it. But uh, you know, whatever. Not the end of the not the end of the world, really. Still need to scoop up a couple of other empires, though, whilst we can. These ones in particular, if we can. 
I don't really know what I'm going to do about the Fallen, though. Of course, I went with Organo Machine Interfacing, because that's clearly the only way to go if you're a hive mind. But that means that I had to do the Flesh is Weak, which then creates a new species within your empire. Introducing the neo Sack. <laughs> Have you ever played one of those games of, say, Crusader Kings, and you're playing in India, and, like, after 200 years, you'll look over, and you look at Europe, and you're just like, what on earth happened here? Well, this is the Quivarian Concern, their megacorp to our south. They got a, a fairly beefy amount of firepower. Remember the Fallen? Yeah, they somehow had an internal uprising, and now the uh, Charonian Concern has popped up over there. And the Fallen only have two systems remaining. I have no idea what happened here. It is... It is... I have no idea what the, what on earth is going on. Even a Marxist Interplanetary Alliance has decided to pop in to say hi. I... I just don't know. It is just an absolute mess. You know, when the hive mind that is basically consuming the entire galaxy and turning everybody into a vassal is not considered to be the, uh, the most dangerous thing at hand, and uh, the Galactic Crisis is, in fact, the purifier to your Galactic East. Yeah, then you know you have some problems, because I am not a member of the Galactic Community, and I do not adhere to their policies. Which means, uh, in the grand scheme of things, I consider this a win, because I'm not automatically at war with these guys. And, uh, yeah, oh, they are a Crisis Aspirant. That's a problem. Oh, and the Tijana and the Tijanki are now extinct. And those were going to be part of my fleet. Okay, this means war. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so we have moved on from the perils of the Tijanki because, of course, they are now extinct, which means that we can actually no longer leverage them as uh, our forces which on one hand is unfortunate on the other hand it means that we just need to get battleships with everything which is fine like it's just a little bit more effort here and there but uh at least you know we're cutting through th through these guys like a hot knife through butter because we're literally shooting them from across space and considering I took their capital earlier, it basically means that I could have already crippled them uh, quite significantly uh, early on in the game. And there's nothing they can do about it. So, sucks to be you guys. And of course, whilst we're at war with Linnea and um, everybody basically just carving them up piecemeal, uh, we're, we're just going to go for a little cheeky war on the side, you know? A little, little, a little cheek in the middle of that there territory. Yeah, there you go. Let's uh, just uh, cheekily take all of this stuff. Yeah, that's... That's the one. Why are they called the Fortress, though, is the real question, I would say. Well, that was an aerophasic engine quickly destroyed, so... I guess... That's a thing. Uh, it doesn't really matter to us all that much, to be honest, because... We're still gonna be uh, just threading all over these guys without, uh, you know, any issue, I hope. Uh, there's still a couple of, some firepower around, but most of their fleets have been uh, thoroughly humbled. And uh, on top of that, I've got quite a lot of my subjects' firepower with me as well, who uh, are just, uh, you know, ready to turn other people into subjects. So, at least there's that. And now, with these guys under our control as well, it's probably time to start um, swooping things up. I've noticed that uh, the Fallen, as well as this Concern over here, are rather weak. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and scoop up this here um, Stellar Devourer. I don't think we can actually do anything with it, which is unfortunate, but I know that we can get some cool events out of it. Stellar Devourer, uh, retrieve the Egg Sack or study the corpse. Uh, the egg sack or study the core. We'll bring the egg sack back to our back to our capital because we're not particularly interested in um, uh, in bringing the corpse back to our capital. Actually, no, we don't want to study the corpse because reigniting that system doesn't really do all that much good. What we are interested in, however, is trying to find the way into the fallen territory. 
So what I'm going to do is I am just going to go ahead and uh, explore every natural wormhole in the galaxy. Because apparently everything is now connected through hyperlane relays. So, you know, we can just get through the entire galaxy super quickly. And that is basically it. Uh, also, the Enigmatic Fortress is here. Good law. Good lord, I love the Enigmatic Fortress. Did it actually... Did it actually go to... Oh, yes, it did. Well. Um... Yeah, this place is gonna fall then. I swear to God. If this is the reason why we're losing, I will be so upset. Alright, where are they? Where is this this power surge coming from? I am super curious. Alright, where are you? There's a hyper relay here. GG. Alright, how strong are they? It's not good. It's definitely not great. We're gonna need to muster the fleets. Oh, Jesus. I don't think we can actually beat them. I actually don't think we have the firepower. Oh. We need to encourage every single fleet to join us. And we need to hold here in this system this is where we draw the line the line must be drawn here a space storm arrives in the middle of a okay we're going in um i don't care what's happening uh the unbidden don't have any shields they do not have any shields the bridge is down we're gonna go in the space storm is up and running as long as we can catch them with their pants down we are looking good of course not in this system for some reason is there I'm still gonna horribly die here. I, I. Oh. <sighs> I mean, it wouldn't be the first time that I jump into a system with a certain level of reckless abandon. And subsequently lose my entire fleet because I think I'm on the winning. <laughs> ah! I, I just lost my entire fleet to the unbidden. <laughs> GG. Yeah, we're toast. Um, <laughs> they're knocking down the door. Uh, well, at least you know interdimensional trade is increasing, so there's there's that. But um, we don't really have all that much fleet power at the moment. Sure, we're cranking out alloys like mad. We got a... We even have like a, a mega shipyard. Oh, an incoming raid? Oh, that's delightful. I, That's so helpful at this moment in time, guys. Uh, yeah, they're sending in stacks of several... Technology several six-figure uh, fleets oh, in into my backyard. They're going to take my capital at this rate. Is there anything I can do to reinforce is the question. Is this going to be our last stand? I I pray it's not. Oh god, we're all going to die, aren't we? Well, time to put out the old trump card. Defender of the galaxy. Uh, plus 50% damage to the unbidden. Let's hope that's going to be enough. I don't think it will, but... Oh my god, they just keep on adding more and more fleets. Rogue drone dra What the hell is this? Okay, that's fascinating. Um, don't really have time to look at that on that peculiar um, scenario that's going on there because we're about to lose everything. We got twenty three thousand over here. State. Okay, this station's actually better. It's actually more powerful. It's probably better to try to hold the line here in the system that also does not have any shields in it at this moment in time. But the interdimensional oh, armada is... Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. That's a lot of unbidden. That's like their main capital fleet in combination with a bunch of other stuff as well. Ooh, oh god, and there's more coming in here too. And they're playing tag you with the... Um, with the several planets. Like the beach spawn over here. Which is 
surprisingly very close to the ball spawn, but like a whole different category of uh, of creatures. Ugh. Well, the unbidden has completely bypassed us, and they are sleeper cell established. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, and they're kind of rocking oh, into my enemy space like a tsunami hitting a wave and uh, I'm, I'm actually kind of curious what's gonna oh my god that's 200,000 this is a bulwark by the way so these guys are all about the defense and uh, oh they may actually be able to hold off we sent space for they no they're not gonna be able to do it their, yeah, their systems are going to be om nom nom. They're going to play a galactic tag your it with their pops, and that's going to be it. <laughs> that's kind of cute. The Enclave trying to defend. There's another, oh, another stack has just come in. Yeah, uh, oh my god, this bulwark is just being completely ripped to shreds. <laughs> oh, 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 that's bad. Oh, that's real. Oh, no. Ooh. Okay, well, time for a fight of a lifetime, I guess. Do my battleships, what kind of... Oh, no, I never... Oh, I never gave them... Oh, I'm such a silly goose. I never put tachyons on my ships, and all my battleships are just going to go in with a gazillion strike craft. Against the unbidden. Well, hey, the, the zombie to Jenki are still here, so that's at least something. Yeah, I don't, I don't see us winning this, like at all. <laughs> they are, uh, they are going to consume my worlds, and that'll be it. If I fit a tachyons, like, we would have been in a much better state, but, you know, you win some, you lose some, I guess. Maybe I should retreat the fleets. I think that would be the wiser choice. Yeah, retreat all the fleets and back to the capital immediately, immediately refit the bow. I thought I refitted them. What happened here? Anti-shield heavy weapons. Our military hive is lost. That's the shield. That's the gear cannons. Ooh, engine saturation challenge. Oof, that is. That is hot. How many artifacts do I have? How much? How many artifacts did it cost? Forty. I don't have the money for that. Well, here we. Oh wait, hold on. Uh, kinetic artillery, right? Yeah, definitely add kinetic artillery to that. So, yeah, definitely add kinetic artillery to that. There we go. If I can somehow manage to upgrade my fleets, then we should be okay. If not, we will lose this game because I'm a dumbass. Uh, okay. Upgrade the fleet as fast as you can. We need to get... Oh, we got to make a shipyard. Oh, yes. Uh, this fleet is being upgraded. Okay, that's good. Okay, so we got to make a shipyard. That's at least something. Uh, military applications, of course. Uh, shield damage plus 10. Let's start enacting a bunch of policies here. Just focusing crystals. Crystalline sensor, reactive armor, like the whole shebang, everything. Gases, fuel, learn learning campaigns, f fleet supremacy, like we're just going to enact it all. Uh, a grand fleet. There we go. Uh, nothing but battleships on the line. It's, uh, this, this is it. This is, this is probably something we should have done a while back already. Oh my god, I just been sick, like almost all my alloys on that oh my god the galaxy is not technology conceived 
doing so hot? Are these guys actually managed to fight them back? They may... What the hell is going on in this system? Is this the new... Is this a new habitat system? Oh yeah, it is. That's weird. The galaxy is on fire. The Umbid are now running around. They're getting kind of torn apart. And then they're pushing back. This place, I don't know what's going on over here. These guys just popped up out of nowhere. Uh, finally, my my dudes to the south are being assumed that I'm they're being eaten. I would hope so, because they'll be they'll be weakening them. Uh, weakening them and then I can take them. Uh what I did not expect was this uh rogue defense system uh robotic uprising. Uh so that's a thing that's currently going on. So robots, uh, Skynet, unbidden, Technology me not really present. caring. Um yeah this is this is one weird ass galaxy and we started out just um Harvesting to Janky and adding them to our fleets. They're extinct now, by the way. Don't worry too much about them. They're all gone. They're not coming back. I still have all the seed pods on my stations, but um, there's really no reason to do so. <laughs> Remember back when I killed the Star Eater? I I've been working on a little project. Uh, you know, as the entire galaxy is effectively on fire and the unbidden running around, etc. It means that there's not a lot of time being spent on you know research so um these guys which are of course how are they now a criminal syndicate they were not a criminal syndicate before anyway uh but also wait hold on are they galactic leaders somehow it doesn't matter anyway we're gonna go ahead and uh, consume their star uh that's gonna be a fun one uh, it's gonna cost us a fair amount of influence but it doesn't matter, uh, because with a bit of luck it will destroy their star. And on top of that, um, if they don't have any science ships, which I really hope they don't, uh, it means they won't be able to stop it. And the Unbidden are just going to come in as well, which is great. They're, they're trying real hard to hold off the Unbidden, but they're just streaming Technology down the line and proceed. keeping on respawning. I don't really care. I got a huge-ass fleet, which I've already lost three times now. And uh, we'll, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Let's put it that way. Uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and gamble whilst the galaxy is dying. I think that's that's probably the best way of dealing with things here. Let's open up a reliquary, shall we? Oh, good. A sense of pride and accomplishment. I see, feel this is so worth my time. Cool. The operation is uh, underhand. Let's see. Oh, no. The, the infestation of uh, the enemy's capital system was, in fact, successful. Uh, we may have just doomed an entire solar system to a cruel and cold death. Well, I would hope so. The only thing they can do at this moment is throw a bunch of science ships at it. But a bit of luck, they don't have those anymore. So, we'll see. In the meantime, it looks like the uh, my enemies have managed to put some sort of task force together to push the Unbidden back. Uh, I still have more firepower than them, but the Unbidden has ba basically been reduced to uh, their main system. Um, sure, they're still spawning stuff through the portal, so we'll see how that all pans out, but there's not much they can do. Uh, they never really expanded into this direction, so they couldn't get any more uh, anchors, which I think is a little bit weird. But hey, what are you going to do, right? Like, they've done their job, they've crippled the enemy, which is what we wanted them to do. And on top of that, the Omnian Grid has also opened up the door for some reason. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. But uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the the Armadas are moving around. They're, they're killing stuff. Uh, they're, I think, actually going to be able to kill this one as well. Ah, very nice. Very nice indeed. Well, not that one, though. And whilst they've just managed to take down, effectively, the Unbidden, we're just going to send our entire fleets just to quickly dive in there because obviously we want to get the the warlock out of this before they manage to uh, take it how much firepower do you have sir Sixty-three thousand. yeah that's not going to be enough to crack the final system it is quite gorgeous isn't it the rift in space it, it, it is quite something but uh like i said we're just going to go ahead and uh steal the proverbial uh thing from underneath their noses they've done all the work We'll just uh, clear everything up, shall we? Let's dive in. 
Sweet. Uh, <laughs> we, we saved the galaxy. Uh, apparently, our fleet managed to come in just in time. And we got the, the extra dimensional warlock for our uh, efforts. Apparently, it means that our supply is increased. Our ship weapon range is increased by 30%, which is a huge bonus. And on top of that, we get a bunch of bonuses to jump drive stuff. We'll just do some research of some older stuff here. There you go. Anyway, it means that... Um, they're just better than everybody else because clearly we did all the work in this war and uh, all the other all the other empires were just useless yeah we see we we, def we defeated the invasion single-handedly what did you guys do absolutely nothing absolutely nothing except for dying maybe anyway uh for our next step we're just going to go ahead and negotiate all of our uh, agreements to make sure that they always join our offenses why uh no reason, no reason in particular. Uh, they're just gonna, you know, just want to make sure that, um, just want to make sure that, uh, you know, if something, if something bad would happen, they would join us in our fights. Let's, let's put it that way. Nothing nefarious is going on here. Don't you worry. It's all okay. Meanwhile, <laughs> it, it looks like our, um, a little operation worked and, um, Oh, Frozen World. And this is a Class T Brown Dwarf. <laughs> the economy is going to be completely crippled. Uh, where, where's the rest of their stuff coming out here? 19 pops. Yeah, that's all right. That's, a, that's a, a reasonable amount of pops to throw into one place. Oh, there's only like a bunch of Tomb Worlds left, eh? Well... How about we do some espionage and pff, tell you what, how about we consume a star? Okay, Chosen. It's finally time to lay down the uh, good old axe because you killed my void worm. Uh, sure, I kind of haphazardly threw it into the into the blender, but, you know, I will still have to take, you know, all your stuff away because you ruined my stuff and... I don't appreciate it when people ruin uh, my stuff. So I'm just quickly going to take you completely apart. Oh boy, another successful infestation. I'm, <laughs> I've been investing every single star in my enemy's empire. Um, because I cannot be bothered trying to crack that nut. Uh, more importantly, I want to take down this particular system and destroy this particular star because they got a reasonable amount of firepower here and I'd rather blow up an entire star than having to deal with this because that's how petty I am. Oh, well, uh, I'm about 200 years behind schedule. No, I was going to finish the game by 2300, I was going to say. Yeah, it's now 120 years behind that point. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and um, be done with it. Dude, these guys are interesting. Are you independent now? No, you're not. Interesting. I'd like to claim this system, please, because for some reason, it doesn't look like you are going to be helped by your overlord. Which means... Free system? Question mark? Yeah, I had a query even con so concern or are not fighting at all. Huh. What a strange, strange scenario here. Just gonna need to grab all of my armies, all 2,000 of them. And just, uh, start dropping down. Technology. Alright, it's time to unify the galaxy under one banner, and that would be a my banner. Um, I need to the, I need to claim a bunch of systems, I guess. Uh, first priority is to weaken the enemy as much as possible, and then uh, vassalize them down the line. Uh, 920 is pretty expensive, but it's fine, because they also have uh, another problem going on right now. Plus, all my vassals are coming with me. Basically, the entire galaxy is just uh, at war here. Conferous waivers. Uh, yeah, sure. Sweet. Okay, cool. Uh, let's hope that uh, I will be able to deploy yet another um, uh, stellar devourer on these worlds. Because that went really well before. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to 
race towards enemy uh, enemy fleets to uh, intercept them as fast as I can. I think they're already decided to uh, to join anyway. So that's something, I guess. There they go. Because I got all this insane rain. Yeah, okay. They're all going to die very rapidly. <laughs> oh, look. Oh, oh, look. Oh. Oh, that is... That is not an insignificant amount of firepower they got there. I feel I am... Ooh. I need to fall back to the other side of the system if I can. Ooh. Oh no. Oh, this, this could be extremely painful. Quickly, uh, g g get get an upgrade. Okay. Okay, we have to retreat there because there is no way I'm gonna be able to fight that back at the moment. That is a cool five hundred thousand fleet power right there, and I only have about four hundred, so I need to have a better position. Yeah, in order to counter this, we're gonna need to crank out an additional fleet. Thankfully. Unlike somebody else, I've crippled their economy by just dropping um, stuff on their planets consistently. I don't have that problem. I can just drop, like, a ton of battleships into their production queue, and they'll be done in six months. That's a lot of additional firepower that's going to be able to be uh, fielded basically instantly. Like, it's... it's uh, Okay, they're coming for me again. Uh... Okay, where are you guys going? I need to fall. I need to keep on falling back for the moment. Like, the Zalia systems. Yes, this seems to be a great place to fall back to. Excellent. Yes, we'll fall back here. We'll we'll fall back into that position, and let the station do the talking. And let's hope that our new battleships come off the factory floor relatively quickly. And they made a bit of boo boo. They dropped only one fleet into. Well, it's two, two fleets into a system. My allies jumped on them. Oh, there is a sky dragon here. That will look so good on the mantelpiece. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is... They are going to die. They are going to die. And that's going to be a dead space dragon. Did we actually kill it? Oh, we did kill it. Well, so got a sci we can get no science out of this, but... Still, like, what is our... Oh my god, yeah, we just absolutely annihilated that stack. And uh, we're just going to reinforce all of that stuff instantly because our economy is just on stair. Yeah, they, they split up their fleets. They made a huge mistake doing that. Because that is giving me such a massive advantage. Like, there's literally nothing they can do. Like, I took down two of their fleets. I managed to reinforce with an additional battleship fleet in... A rather limited amount of time and I can just jump right on top of them uh, at range because I got those bonuses from uh, super long range engagement stuff so I'm already engaging them I'm getting th two to three tachyon shots off uh, or even heavy kinetic batteries off before they can even get in weapons range that's the level of insanity that we have like, I'm shooting them from across the system like there's nothing they can do it is. Let me just quickly engage. Yeah, let's get the station back. Yeah, this. Can I maybe do something cheeky here? Can I very rapidly engage these guys? Yeah, we just go through the network. And that's it. Well, there's another one over here, actually. 93,000. Like, that's nothing. Nothing anymore, anyway. It, it was definitely a problem at one point, but... Then they made the stupid mistake of splitting up. And now I'm going to intercept them in 50 days. So... Yeah. Shame about that. 20 days. 14 days. Crushing. They're gone. <laughs> and these guys are stuck in a cul-de-sac. Can I even get to them? No, I can't. They're in a dead end system. Yeah, they're literally in a dead end system. I just have to Crushing. annihilate this system over here, flip it back to my side, 
jump through on the other. And this war is over. It's it's they made a mistake. It was it was balanced for quite some time. But they made a stupid mistake of splitting their fleets at the worst possible moment, and I just took everything. Going into deep. Uh, always be careful with your defenses. Uh, def uh, make sure that you, uh, you know, destroy your enemy in detail. Wow, we uh, we crushed these guys so hard, they're literally rattling. Yeah, they're, they're rattled. Gotta love this bug. It's, it's great. It's time to end this party and uh, win the universe. It's the last. It's the last fight, basically. It's the last Empire standing. We're gonna go in. We're gonna win, and that'll be the end of it. I'm sick and tired of this. We are about 200 years behind schedule. Which, to be fair, I live in Germany, and they've been uh, working on the rails. So, comparatively, we are uh, pretty much on time. When it comes to that sort of thing. The, the trains are never on time here for some reason. I don't know why that is. But still. But yeah. How many troops you got here? 3,000. Wow. Okay. Well, we we'll just need to bomb you then. Into oblivion. They've surrendered. Literally, that's it. <laughs> the, the, the galaxy is mine. For the first time in like two years. I've managed to do a... Conquest victory. And what a run it was. Like, obviously, starting off with uh, all the joys that is the... Well, what can one say? The uh, the Starseed Garden. And, of course, that very rapidly turned into the extinction of all the Tijanki. But, you know, that initial roll really pushed us forward. Could I have done it a lot quicker? Of course, I could have done it a lot quicker. But, you know, messing around with the Tijanki for such a long time. And then, <laughs> of course, sending the Shard into the fray with the fall and all that jazz, which was all that great. But, you know, finally... 40 years before the official end of the game, the galaxy is at peace. Oh, I hope you enjoyed this. It's been, uh, this has been a pleasure. It took me a couple of days to record this one. It was a lot of fun. And, uh, of course, uh, thank you to the sponsor of this video. And in the meantime, though, if you are uh, interested in uh, more uh, Solar, feel free to give the channel a subscribe. It's much appreciated. In the meantime, check out this video that I got up over here. Until next time, take good care of yourselves, and as always, each other.